My guest tonight is, of course, a legendary stand-up comedian who starred in the groundbreaking TV shows The Bob Newhart Show and Newhart. He also, of course, starred in the film Elf. Uh, He's done it all, and he's one of my favorite all-time people. Please welcome our good friend, Mr. Bob Newhart. Hello, Bob. How are you? Thank you, Conan. Thank you. I'm I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing uh, very well, and I can tell that you're thrilled to speak to me. This must be a big deal for you. You seem, I mean, this is, I mean, of all the things you've accomplished in your life, this has got to be at the top. I, I can't get on anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I had that coming. Um, you know, there's so much to talk about, but I first, I have to ask you, I've gotten to know you a little bit, as much as you'll allow, and uh, I worry about you during this pandemic. Are you bored? What are you doing to stay occupied, what do you do with your time since uh, you're you're quarantined? Well, thank thank God for football because that that has that has saved my life. Uh, and we've only got a few more days left, and then and then it's uh, you know it's over. But yeah. uh, you never played football, did you? I played the game. Yeah, you, you know I don't look like it. I don't look like a. I, I mean, I'm only five eight, but. Um, I, I I was a, I was running back in high school and uh, oh. and actually I was quite good as as a matter of fact I was I didn't I didn't realize you were you were a running back in football that's impressive yeah, I was a running back I was I I was up for a, um, a, a football scholarship at Notre Dame which is wow you know, pretty hard to get yeah but this, uh, this one play there was one play kept me out of of getting the uh, the scholarship at Notre Dame it's the uh-huh. uh, you know, the, the fake handoff into the line, you know, where the quarterback, like, appears to hand you the ball. And and, and you, you, you have to pretend that you have it. Yeah, you pretend and you run. Yeah, well, I used to yell out, I, I don't have it. I don't have it. Because <laughs> then, then they, they wouldn't tackle me, you know. You... <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to do that. It really... It really I hurts know, the illusion. It hurts the illusion, Bob. That's what Notre Dame said. <laughs> <laughs> are you scheduled to get the vaccine? You know, or is, do you think you're going to get the vaccine soon? Yeah, well, I'm 91. I figured, you know, we're supposed to be right after the, uh, the, uh, the nursing homes and right after the, uh, the health care people. But I haven't. I called up my doctor uh, the other day and I said, because I wanted to find out what the procedure is, you know, the protocol and all that. And uh, he said, we don't know. We haven't gotten any word from, from the county. Mm-hmm. He said, you might, uh, you might try Ralph's. <laughs> Ralph's? Wait. Ralph's the... Is a, it's a grocery store. Yeah. You know? what, I, you, what is he talking I don't about? Trust, I don't trust grocery. You know, I don't want the guy saying, you know, uh, yeah, uh, Phil... Yeah, when you get finished putting the lettuce away, uh, give this guy a shot, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's a, that long, thin needle. The, the, that's, you know, that's it. Don't. So, uh, please don't go to Ralph's. I know they have a pharmacy try, section, but don't go to Ralph's. Okay. I may try Ace Hardware. I don't know. But maybe that's <laughs> You know, uh, Bob, I, I really, I said it in the intro, you really have accomplished so much in your career. You've done it all. You've met everybody. And it, it occurred to me, there's so many people that are the subject of a biopic these days. I think, I mean, given your incredible career, you would be a great subject for a biopic. Have you thought about who might play you? Uh, I think The Rock. <laughs> Wait, Dwayne the Rock Johnson? Yeah, I get mistaken for him a lot. <laughs> say, hey, Dwayne. And I said, no, hey, I'm, I'm not Dwayne. I'm Bob. <laughs> but uh, there, should be, there should be quite a fight over it. Yeah, I, um, you know. well, I, I, I'm sure the Rock is, an, you know, very anxious to play that part. He could and recreate Brett, your um, he could recreate your football career your early football career very that's well. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Him running and shouting, I, "I don't have it," would be a lot of fun to see. I, I Brad Pitt is supposed to be very interested. Yeah, yeah. You've been uh, married, of course, 
for 58 years. One of the great pleasures of my, uh, of my life these last couple of years is getting to know both you and, and, and Ginny, who is just a marvelous person. Uh, Ginny said, if people knew what Bob <laughs> really thought about, what really went on in his mind, his career would be over. That, you, that the stuff that you think about and don't say is pretty dark. Is that true? I, isn't that true of any comedy writer? Yep. I mean, isn't that true? It's, uh, um, yeah, I tend to find humor in the, uh, in the macabre. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's, I've noticed that we joke about all kinds of things in a writer's room. That then we, we, we do that for maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then we say, okay, now we have to think of the stuff we can actually do on television. Because know, none I of this can be done. <laughs> do you ever think of routines that are too strange? You must all the time think of routines and you try them out on Ginny and she says, don't ever tell anybody that. No one can ever know that routine. It's too weird. It's too dark. Well, there was, there's one. It's a true, it was a true story. Um, and it was, uh, it, it, it supposedly it was a story about uh, a guy was picked up by uh, extraterrestrials. Uh, you know, they're in a UFO and they landed. This was in, I think, Ohio. I could be wrong on that. Yeah. Uh, uh, most, most things happen in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> most stories take place that's in Ohio. Where they, that's where the extraterrestrials seemed, they seem to like Ohio. They enjoy, they enjoy so, touching down in Ohio. So they absconded him. Mm-hmm. And uh, they took him up to Mars. That's where, where they were from. And uh, he was up there for, uh, I don't know, about uh, maybe a year or something like that. And, uh, and then they, they brought him back and they, they uh, deplaned him, whatever you want to call it, in, <laughs> in Ohio. They de-saucered, they, they de-saucered him they in Ohio. They de-saucered him in Ohio where they had picked him, they had picked him up. And uh, the FBI and the CIA, they wanted to know, uh, they, they were shocked to find out that uh, the extraterrestrials had done this. And, uh, and they said to him, they said, uh, you were there for like a year. Are they, are they more advanced? Is it a more advanced civilization than, than say we are? Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, they're, 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 they're more advanced. And they said, well, by, like, by how much would you say? And uh, he said, I'd, I'd say six weeks. <laughs> Wait, they're advanced, but only by six weeks? Yeah, yeah. They had apparently, uh, they, they had the, you know, the disposable razors. Remember when you used to? Yeah. You, and just run away. Yeah. Uh, they had them already, and it was like six weeks later we got to, <laughs> we got this person we're waiting. Uh, this I love. I love that you started that story with, and this is true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've had uh, so many surprising friendships. I mean, with uh, you, first of all, surprising friendships. You've you've made friends with so many huge stars over the years. And I, many people marveled at your friendship with Don Rickles because he was publicly so different. His act was so different than you and his persona was so different than you. But you've also known uh, Frank Sinatra, for example. You, you were good friends with Frank, is that true? Yeah, Jenny and I, we, we, uh, we, we had a beach house and uh, Frank had a beach house and uh, we would be invited to their house. And that, that, was, an, that was a great honor because he was, he was a giant, you know? He was a very, as you know, he was very uh, uh, philanthropic. And um, they tell the story about, <clears throat> he was gonna do the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Mm-hmm. And he was getting a shoe shine. And the guy shined his shoes and they were ready to go in to do. Uh, and so Frank said, uh, he said to, to the guy who shined his shoes, he said, uh, what's, what's the biggest tip you ever got? And the guy said, uh, $100, Mr. Sinatra. And uh, Frank pulled off two big ones. He said, there, now that, that 200 that's, that's the biggest tip you ever got. 
He said, well, thank you very much, Mr. Sinatra. He said, who gave you the hundred dollars? Just out of curiosity. He said, you did, Mr. Sinatra. <laughs> That's a true story. That's good. <laughs> the Ohio story, I made, I made up the Ohio. <laughs> yeah, the, the alien civilization yeah, that's yeah, uh, yeah. six weeks ahead, you made up. But the Sinatra made, story made, yeah. uh, is true. Uh, another absolute giant, uh, Richard Pryor. We, you and I have discussed Richard Pryor because I've asked you over the years uh, various uh, intimate questions. I asked you who was your favorite all-time uh, comedian. You said it was Richard Pryor. You said Richard Pryor was your favorite stand-up. Well, you I thought. used to say Rickles, you know, mm-hmm. because, well, I had to say Rickles. Right. Because <laughs> he was usually right there, you know, you had to yeah. say Rickles. Um, and, uh, but uh, secretly, uh, I, no, I think Pryor, Pryor without question was the most influential stand-up and uh, in the past 50 years, I mean, yeah. you, you still have guys doing the prior. He was, uh, he was brilliant. I, I used to say, he was like, I got the Mark Twain Award uh, in, uh, I think it was 2006 or something like that. And, uh, I, I, and then he, then Richard got it. And kind of what, what Mark Twain did and what, what Pryor did were the two things, were the, were the same thing, because Mark Twain was describing life in the Mississippi on, in effect, the frontier mm-hmm. at the turn of the of, of the 19th century. Uh, uh, yeah, and, um, and Pryor was describing life in the inner city at the turn of the 20th century. So yeah. there were... So I, I I gave him an award one time. I mean, I was I, I presented him with an award. George Slaughter had a, a, a lifetime achievement award, and Richard uh, got it. And I, I handed it to him. He was in the wheelchair at that point. So we went to commercial. We came back, and he and I were just standing there. And he looked up and he looked up at me. He said, uh, "So I, I stole your record." He stole it? He stole which one? Button Down Mind? Was it Button Down Mind? Mind. I yeah. said, what'd you say? He said, I, I, I stole your album. He said, I was in Peoria, Illinois, and uh, I went into a record store and I, I put it in my jacket. So that, that was, there's no higher tribute than Richard Pryor saying he stole it. Richard Pryor stole your album. I, I don't think there is a higher tribute. No. What did you say to him when he told you that he had stolen your album? I said, you know, I said, well, Richard, uh, I said, uh, you owe me a quarter. I said, I got a quarter for each album. <laughs> and, and he said, who's got a quarter? Give me a quarter. <laughs> and he gave it to me. I still have it. I still have the quarter Richard Pryor gave me. You know, I want to ask you about um, this project, because this is really exciting to me, Bob Newhart off the record. This is an hour-long comedy concert, and it's kind of a special event. Tell us, explain to people what this is. Well, when I, when I made the, the Button on Mine, the first album in, in 1960, mm-hmm. uh, we sent the tapes to Warner Brother Records, and they edited them, and, and they would like, oh, there's a pause, we'll take that out. And uh, oh, there, there, we got about two seconds there. We can take that out. So, it, it, you know, it, when, when I heard it, it was like jarring to me. I wasn't about to complain because it was it was a huge hit. But I thought that if I ever get the chance to, to do it the way I heard it in my head, um, that's you know, as a comedian, you can understand the pauses are sometimes as, as important or more important than than the words themselves. Yep. And so, uh, so uh, Showtime approached me. And this was 1995, and uh, they said, "What would you like to do?" And I said, "I'd like to, I'd like to re-record, uh, hearing it the way I had heard it." And uh, and so we recorded it. And um, this is a, the first time it's out uh, digitally, which is which is like a whole new world. And it isn't like the record business; you don't go into a store and buy it and take mm-hmm. it home. Or steal it in Richard Pryor's <laughs> face, uh, and and uh, I mean you know you just call up and and the next thing you know it's 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 there in the house. So, yeah, it's streaming. Uh, well, this is this yeah. is 
it's crazy. kind of the way it's a way I heard it originally. Yeah. You know, uh, many. I'm not the first person to make this point, obviously, but there's such a close connection between uh, comedy and music, rhythm, and exactly. um, I think you more than more than any other comic I can think of always used uh, the spaces the way a really good musician, a jazz musician, would use pauses in spaces to help create the music. And I believe that that's, that's something you honed in on very early in your career. When any, everybody else was trying to fill the space with noise, you would take these very long pauses, little stammers, and it was a, a very musical. Well, that's, yeah, it, I've always felt, I felt three things. I, I felt mathematics, music, and comedy somehow are all intertwined. I'm not sure exactly how. And people used to say, as you, as you know, after this interview, I, I stammer. I mean, that's the way I talk. Because people would say, do you really stammer? And I said, yeah, because there have been, there have been comedians who, who stuttered but they didn't really stutter. They only stuttered uh, on stage. And uh, one of them was Joe, Joe Frisco. You ever hear of Joe Frisco? He's very funny. I, I, and, don't, uh, I don't know Joe. I didn't know about Joe Frisco. He, he stuttered. And uh, they told a story about Joe Frisco. He, that he was staying at this flop house in, in New York. And he ran into a buddy of his who was, who was even in worse shape uh, financially than, than, than Joe was. And and Joe said, hey, I tell you what, you can stay, you can stay with me, but you got to climb up the the uh, the, uh, the fire escape, um, you know, when the fire escapes were on the outside mm -hmm. of the building. Mm -hmm. He said, because if they find out that I that you're staying there, they're going to hit me with a, a, a double occupancy. Yep. So the guy said, Yeah, Joe, sure. So he crawls up the outside, and and he's in Joe's small apartment, and the phone rings. It's the clerk downstairs. And he said, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Frisco, we know that you uh, you have a guest and we're going to charge you for double the occupancy. And uh, Joe Frisco, who really stuttered, said, uh, oh, 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 OK, but send, send up, send, send, send up another, another Gideon Bible. We lost sound. I have no sound. I can't hear. I can't hear anything. I don't. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I good. Oh, it. good. Yeah. Oh, good. There was a great moment there where we're doing this obviously via Zoom, and you told this punchline, and I laughed really hard, but you couldn't hear me. You couldn't hear me laughing, and you thought that I just didn't like the joke and that you had bombed. Is that true? That's right. Yeah. Which I've been through before, yeah. you know. Yeah, I've never experienced that, Bob. So I don't know what it's like. But uh... you, you know what you, you know what it is like. What? You hear the, you hear the air conditioning. Yes. Well, I I'm quite familiar. There are times <laughs> you can, oh, there's a phone ringing. What, Bob? Yes, you're I'm not sure. taking this interview very seriously. You're clearly not taking. This is a big deal to be on the Conan O'Brien show. And you're treating me with contempt. Somebody on the phone saying, did Conan laugh? <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't laugh. I don't know why. <laughs> but you did, for a moment there, we were talking on, on but, Zoom. You know, I know men don't compliment other men on their hair, but I like, I like the way you're doing your hair. Thank, thank you. You've always been a big supporter of my hair in my career. <laughs> well, somebody has, yeah. <laughs> Not so much my comedy, but you've always said the hair is good. And that's, yeah. <laughs> that's more important to me than the comedy. Um, you must be very anxious to get out there and do stand-up again. I'm very anxious to get out of this interview. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Okay. You've done nothing but abuse me. Uh, I think I've been good to you. I think I've been good to Ginny. And how am I repaid? With absolute scorn. Uh, you got to check this out. The hour-long comedy concert, Bob Newhart, off the record, this is very special, is available to stream digitally 
for the first time via streams on all major digital platforms. And uh, whether you're an incredible fan of comedy like myself or just someone who wants to laugh right now, make sure you check that out. Bob, thank you. Thank you oh, for, for doing this always interview. A, always a pleasure. Well, Please invite me to insult you again. <laughs> you, did, you did my podcast, and it was an <laughs> hour of you insulting me viciously. I've never heard my staff laugh harder. They loved it. So, it was, it, uh, Conan, it was low-hanging fruit. I mean, you, could, you couldn't avoid it. You're saying that I leave myself open. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. Well, Bob, uh, I can't wait for this uh, pandemic to be over. You know, the last thing that happened, my last social engagement was my wife, Liza, and I were going to have dinner with you and Ginny, and it was the night that they shut down all the restaurants in L.A., and I've been suspicious ever since that you yeah, somehow... You did something to get out of that engagement. That's the, the excuse we use, Jeff. <laughs> and guess what? It was four months before the pandemic even hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bob Newhart, my best to you, my best to your lovely wife, Ginny. And thank, thank you. you so much for being here. And everyone, check out Bob Newhart, Off the Record, <clears throat> streaming everywhere. I bow to you. I think it's Off the Record. Didn't I say that? Bob Newhart, off the record. I believe that's what I said. Okay. You're just impossible. You're just, you're, you, you went from my favorite person to my least favorite person in about 15 minutes. I don't know how you manage that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bob. I hope you're well. I hope you guys are well. We are. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Don't say anything derogatory because I can still hear you. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, Bob. Okay. Don't, Bob. This is the part where you're not supposed to say, "I'm glad we're done with that asshole." 